in the story of Musa alayhi salam and in the story of Nuh alayhi salam, you see two visual elements, two things that seem to be in common with each other. One of them is the sea and the other one is the mountain. So in the story of Musa alayhi salam, we know that when Fir'aun was following him, Allah Azza wa Jalla al Bahr, he opened the sea for Musa alayhi salam and the Israelites and they went through and Fir'aun gets drowned inside of the sea. We also know that in the story of Nuh alayhi salam, it's the only other story with flood or drowning is the punishment given to the disbelieving nation. And so the people who disbelieved in Nuh alayhi salam were drowned. In the beginning of the mission of Musa alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa spoke to him on the mountain. The Arabic word for a mountain is either Jabal or Tur. You know, when Allah commanded Nuh alayhi salam to build his ship, to build the ark, after the flood was over, فَاسْتَوَتْ عَلَى الْجُودِ The ship landed on top of the mountain. So the two visual elements that these two stories have in common are the sea and the mountain. When Musa alayhi salam went up to the mountain, Allah tells us in Surah Taha, Allah told him, not only is he about to give him the revelation, وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى We had already done favors to you many times before this. And so he started reminding Musa alayhi salam, when your mother put you in the basket, when your sister was walking on the side of the river, when you were raised in the house of Fir'aun, when we reunited you with your mother, so her eyes could become cool, so she could find comfort again. Then you killed someone and you escaped and we tried you in many ways. Allah makes a list of all of them and then at the end of all of them, the part of the plan was he will get married in Madiyah and he will go in the desert and live there for a while and then one time he will get lost in the desert and he will see a fire on top of a mountain. Maybe he can get some directions there. This is where Allah was having this conversation with him. ya Musa. You came here right on schedule. So all the things you went through were part of my plan so you could be here at this moment. But part of what Allah says to him also is, nafsi. I have chosen you for myself. And another really beautiful thing, the thing I want you to focus on now, is he says, ala aini. So you can be crafted under my watch. You know how in engineering, there are stages of product development, and you have to go through one design phase, then the next design phase, then the next design phase. It's like Musa salam's life was being engineered by Allah. Every one of those experiences was part of the design, so you could be ready for your real mission. And in this, there's a really beautiful lesson that the experiences that we go through, they are part of Allah's design to help engineer us. And as Allah puts us through these experiences, actually each one of those experiences starts building our understanding, builds our maturity, builds our experience. Sometimes you develop strength by going through pain. You know, athletes, for example, if they want to improve themselves, they have to push harder than their previous stamina to improve, right? And that's how they're being engineered to perform even better and better and better. So Allah says to him, وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي So you can be crafted, engineered even, under my watch. And then you find a similar phrase in the story of Nuh Allah told him to build this ship, which was a strange instruction because there was no water anywhere nearby. Why am I building a ship? And nobody even knows how to build a ship. They're not a people that live next to the sea, so they have no reason to know how to build a ship. So Allah gives him wahi and he says, وَاصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا Engineer the ship under our watch. Musa was told, I engineered you under my watch. And Nuh is being told, engineer this ship under my watch. When he was being told to engineer this ship, then everyone around him, they already called him crazy. They already insulted him for many generations. But now after 950 years, Allah is telling him, build a ship. And they're looking at him building a ship. We told you he's crazy. This is the craziest thing he's ever done. The more he builds it, the more people make fun of him. Everybody else is calling him crazy, but he's working according to the design Allah has revealed to him. In the beginning of Surah At-Tur, Allah takes a number of oaths. The first thing He swears by is the mountain. And the last thing He swears by is the sea. And it's very subtle and delicate that at the end of this surah, Allah talked to His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah talked to Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And He said to him, وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا Keep moving forward with patience, stay strong on your mission, because you are commanded by your Rabb, because you are definitely under our eyes. 
The same phrase that I told you was used in the story of Musa alayhi salam. The same phrase that was used in the story of Nuh alayhi salam is a similar phrase that now Allah is using for Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. And he's using it in Surah At-Tur, in the beginning of which he made a hint towards the mountain and he made a hint towards the sea. What does it mean for our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam is going to go through many, many experiences while he is in Mecca. And every one of those experiences is part of what Allah wants him to go through, not just for him, but actually the lessons for all of the ummah until judgment day are being designed by the experiences that our Prophet is going through Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So one of the things that every Muslim, myself and yourself should be aware of is the words of Allah that we get to recite, they're not cheap. It was a big sacrifice that had to be made and the Rasul Sallallahu was being crafted and his mission was being designed by Allah with a lot of pain so that one day we can have the convenience of having access to the word of Allah because it did not come to us in an easy way. It came through us through the sacrifices of our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those that believed in him. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making his da'wah and he was sharing the Quran with the people of Mecca, their aggressiveness towards him was also increasing. And the more their aggressiveness was increasing, the time for hijrah was also coming closer and closer. The time to leave Mecca was coming closer and closer. When he has to leave Mecca, the moment he will leave Mecca, the new chapter will begin and that new chapter is not just the life in Medina, it's the chapter of adab, punishment for the people of Mecca. And the first episode of that punishment was Badr. The second episode was Uhud and so on and so forth. But what does that mean for you and me? When you do the right thing, when you follow the command of Allah, when you stand by the truth, when you stand by what is just, when you don't allow corruption to happen under your watch, when you call it out, whenever you do that, it requires sabr. Because whenever you say the truth, Truth, somebody gets angry. If you say the truth to your mother, she'll get angry. If you say the truth to your wife, don't try this at home, she'll get angry. If you tell the truth to your brother, he might get angry. Sometimes if you treat, speak the truth in your department, the manager might get angry. If you speak the truth in court, some politician might get angry. And so what did the Prophet ﷺ get told? Wasbir li hukmi rabbika. This is sabr actually. Sabr is, I'm gonna stand by the right thing no matter what happens. You just do what your Rabb told you. You keep doing that. But when you do that it's scary. But just know you are under our eye. Allah is watching. And this being under the eye of Allah is actually a very loving phrase. What that means for you and me again is we've got to be strong. And we've got to keep doing the right thing until it becomes impossible to do the right thing. Until the very moment it becomes impossible. And when it becomes impossible, Allah will open a new door. Because Allah, that's His promise in other places in the Quran too. Whoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah will make a new way out for them a new exit, a new possibility. The idea is you and I cannot just say we stand up for justice without going through pain. You have to go through pain. Allah loved his Prophet ﷺ so much and he allowed him to go through a lot of pain. And that's an important lesson. Sabr means you have to go through pain. And when we are ready to go through that pain, then like Nuh ﷺ, like Musa ﷺ, and finally like even Rasulullah ﷺ, we are going to be under the eye of Allah. Allah is going to be watching. When will Allah give a new way for you? How will Allah make a new opening for you? Well, the secret is given in the surah, isn't it? Sabbih bihamdi rabbika hina taqoom. Wa min al-layli fasabbih huwa idbar al-nujum. Do tasbih of Allah every time you get up. Just remember Allah in every activity. Hina taqoom means basically any activity. Everything you're about to do, remember Allah first. Ya Allah, I know you're watching. Ya Allah, I know you're perfect. Do that first and then do whatever job you're about to do. And then even at night time, when all your activities are done, then get up in the middle of the night and then declare Allah's perfection again until the stars disappear. We connect ourselves to Allah and Allah guarantees He will bring a new situation. But it's not just dua to Allah, it's sabr, standing up for the truth and dua to Allah. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide our actions and our thoughts and our emotions through His beautiful words. And may Allah Azza wa Jal bring the blessings of the Quran into my life and yours.